the original God of our Lord, and 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 our Lord. The choice to her seemed easy, but the group looked good. But he seemed to be that hasty. And she had never eaten that fruit from that tree before. Plus, he told her that it would give her something that she didn't have, that, that, that she would, should, would get a knowledge that, that she had never experienced before, the knowledge of good and evil. If it makes sense. And Adam was right there with her. He, he ate too. He's a choice. You know, I thought about it, right? That first sin in the perfect world, the tree of knowledge was going to be able to save the woman alive. Do you know what I'm talking about from the Bible information class? We really dig into that story and we find some answers. But the pronounced short version, God made it to him. God made everything. God made everything to Adam and Eve. He said, don't eat from that one tree in the middle of the garden. <laughs> but the devil told Eve that God didn't really love her. And so she should do what God did. You know what? In fact, you've probably been there with Eve thinking, this is what I want to do. And so they did. They did. And in our text, we see what happened next. Satan had to come and open up a whole new world for them, and it sure did. Our text is from Genesis 3, 8 to 15, and it happens right after the Jesus sin. Right after they, they ate that fruit that they weren't supposed to. And then this. And as I read it, I want you to notice how very different their lives are. Then, so the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. It seems that God made a habit of appearing to them and hanging out with them. That perfect joy and fellowship. I can't even imagine. This was the highlight of their days. But look what happened this day. They hid from the Lord God out of the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree and I commanded you not to eat from it? Man said, if you want to be here with me, she gave me some of her from the tree, and I ate it. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent to me, and I ate it. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, curse are you above all life, and I can all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your heart, and you will strike his heel. This is God's message. Did you notice what was different? Instead of joy and fellowship with their heavenly Father, now all of a sudden, Adam and Eve had fear and shame and guilt. Did you catch that again? Instead of running to God when they heard him coming in the garden, they ran away from him. They hid. Because they chose to align themselves on Satan's side instead of God's. If some of you don't guys would have wanted us to not go on in the presence of the Holy God. But God has a son going. He seeks out the pastor. He calls out through them. He finds them. This one that, that he had created 
in his own image. Remember back to the conversation amongst himself as he was planning to create this one that was designed for a relationship with God. This one that God loved with an eternal love. He said to his father, I'm going to serve you. Can you hear God's heart? Now, of course, he had an excuse, right? I was scared because I was naked. Really? Is that what you're going with? Your entire life you've been naked, Adam. It's never bothered you before. This wasn't an issue, but sin brings shame. And so now suddenly, the most previously perfectly pure sexual desire that we have in our life are clouded by sin. And they're distorted. And there is the shame. He's trying to get out of the shame. He's trying to be able to talk about the thing. He wants to deal with it so that they can, they can be reunited with us. It doesn't give me that. It just brings it up. Did you eat from the tree that they never made you? God asked so they could talk about it. God wants to heal this. He wants his children back on his side. But Adam chose which team he's on. Did you catch him from now on? Blame God? Well, the woman you put here with me, she told me she didn't do it. Now remember, Adam was supposed to be in charge. Adam was supposed to be the leader. He was supposed to be taking care of and protecting and loving his wife. That's what God came in first. But he didn't stop her talking to a snake that was calling down the fire. So he said, the guilt was his to show the world. But he wouldn't confess. He blames on another thing that's a new part of this whole new world that stays open up to him. Of course, he does the same thing. Well, the devil didn't do it. So that should be good. They should be done, God should say, But he wants to know his seat. He wanted them back. But of course, they made their choice. Think about that choice. Have you seen those captain commercials? You know, where the, the spokesperson says, thank you, and that is the easiest decision and the history of decisions. And then they give some examples, right? Like choosing Charles Barkley for your favorite your basketball game, or, or choosing Slash from Guns N' Roses for your high school draft band, or, or Derek Cheater for the, the pitch hit in the company softball game. No brainers, right? This one should have been easier. Right? Okay, I mean, you have to stop. The one who made you. And made everything and gave it all to you. And has been there for you from the moment you arrived. And it has nothing with an eternal love. You want to choose that one? Or the talking snake that's saying he doesn't really love you, contrary to all the evidence that's out That should be an easy choice. Why would they ever not choose to be on God's side? Because we have fallen into that same temptation. Telling ourselves, God's got to come out on me. If I do things this way, then I don't get to experience the things that everyone else gets to experience. I don't, I don't get to, to, to feel the things that. But he's protecting you from. Saving the lives. You get that right here. You know, acting on your anger doesn't bring any relief. It just causes more problems. Living out your, your loss doesn't bring you joy. It just makes relationships so much harder. 
Making decisions based on a complete world by one thing, and having satisfaction and, and, and fulfillment that God wants for you. And all of those things lead to the same job that you ever do. You're a living body. Telling yourself to be kind of God. The shame, you know, which is your heart. The guilt. Or we try to find some of the pain on my heart. How did you get here? I'm making it this way, and it's so easy. But we chose to stand and open up our world to an eternity of punishment. Thank God that even when we were choosing that, He chose us. And He chose to come back to us. And he chose to do everything for us. Look at how God is pursuing Adam and Eve in, in our text. Begging them to return, giving them an opportunity after an opportunity to confess that they were sin and have an open and honest conversation. But they kept choosing the devil's way of dishonesty and deflection. So finally, God says, All right, that's it. I'll just do it. And He steps in. And He hears the Satan. He tells the snake that he is going to bear the, the image of that curse. He's going to crawl on his belly and then eat dust in all his face. And he can't stand up against God and think that everything's going to turn out just fine. But then God gives him a really big one. He promises an enmity. And I think that he can say this God says, No, I'm breaking up that time. I'm putting something in between there. Enmity. Look at verse 15 again. I put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman. And between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. God told Satan, you think that you've got them. But I'm bringing up that enmity. Putting enmity, hostility, and separation between Satan and Eve. And between those who would follow after and say that it is his grace, and those who would follow the promise that, that God was about to give to Eve. We see that, right? Unbelievers and believers throughout history and our world, that always when they got them on, right? They think differently, they act differently, they have different motivations and inspirations. Except when they're trying to jump back on their team. Because God is And then, notice, God declares which team would win. Which side of this enmity would be victorious? He will crush your head. One of Eve's descendants will completely destroy Satan's power to get rid of enmity between Jesus and Satan. And Jesus will win. Have you ever noticed the snake on our crucifixion window over there? It's there because Jesus' work on the cross fulfills this promise we're talking about today. Satan's head, it is crushed, his power it, it, it is obliterated. Yes, he comes to Jesus. He would bruise his heel. But Jesus did that so that he would win. So that his team would win, so that we would win. And then he grows and he gives that victory to us. The choice is easy. Thank God that even when we make the wrong choice, he chooses to love us, to pursue us, and to give us something better. If we accept it, we trust. And the peace of God who passes all understanding and keeps your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.